When we consider a system of objects in classical mechanics, we can describe those objects with many different coordinate systems. Sometimes Cartesian coordinates are most useful, some other times we might choose cylindrical coordinates. But there is also a way to view the system independently of the choice of coordinates. In this video, let's talk about generalized coordinates. To define the position of n point particles in a system, we need to specify n position vectors, that is, 3n numbers. This is called the degree of freedom of a system. It's the smallest number of independent quantities to uniquely define the current state of a system. Let's consider this example. We have a block that can slide left and right and is connected to a spring. Attached to this block is a pendulum of fixed length, which can swing freely left and right. Now what might be the degree of freedom in this system? A naive ansatz would be to assign x and y coordinates to both the block and the pendulum, thus having 4 degrees of freedom. However, the block can never move up or down, so the y component here is not necessary. So we're down to 3 degrees of freedom. And what about the pendulum? Do we really need two numbers to specify its position? The answer is no, because at any given x position, the y position is uniquely determined, since the length of the pendulum is fixed. In fact, it is probably more useful to use the angle of the pendulum as a coordinate. Now, general coordinates make no difference between positions or angles. Once we know the number of degrees of freedom of a system, we take a set of coordinates q1, q2, and so on, which are called generalized coordinates. They are useful to talk about general systems of objects, but once we have a concrete example, we can map each generalized coordinate to a specific choice. Still, if we only know the generalized coordinates of a system, we just know its current state. But we cannot calculate how it might behave in the future. For this, we also need their time derivatives, q dot, which are called generalized velocities. Once we know generalized coordinates and generalized velocities of a system, the generalized accelerations are uniquely defined. The relations between the generalized coordinates, velocities, and accelerations are called the equations of motion. How to calculate them is a topic of a different video. But for now, it's important to know that there are as many equations of motion as degrees of freedom in our system, and that they are second-order differential equations in the functions q of t. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.